Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. The holiday season is quickly approaching. On this episode, I'll be talking about things to do during Thanksgiving, plus events on North Street, the Norman Rockwell Museum, and more. In addition, I'll be discussing one of my favorite holiday movies, The Polar Express, and discussing ways you can support local nonprofit businesses in the area. First, it's time for this episode's trivia question. This episode's question is, which NFL player scored the most points in a Thanksgiving Day game? Now for this episode's local headlines. First, as stated earlier in the show, it's Thanksgiving time. One of the most important things about Thanksgiving, naturally, is giving back. Pittsfield is hosting its South Community Food Pantry. South Community Food Pantry began as an outgrowth of St. Joseph's Kitchen in the 90s. Twelve emergency bags of groceries were available after the weekly meal. The need grew and groceries were distributed from the South Congregational Church Office through the first decade of the 2000s. Around 2010, the mission moved to Barrett Hall and the pantry partnered with the Western Mass Food Bank. South Community Food Pantry was brought to life by community members who share a vision. They welcome individuals from the community to assist in fulfilling their mission with their time, talents, and donation. Visit their website for more information. Also happening are some marathon races. The Thankful 5K in Pittsfield and Turkey Trot in Adams will both be taking place on Thanksgiving Day. These events bring hundreds of runners to Berkshire County very similar to the race held on 4th of July that I've talked about previously on WWHEN. Visit the website shown here for more information. The National Football League will be playing three games as per usual. The first of these games will be the Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions who will be making their 84th Thanksgiving Day appearance. This will take place at 12.30 p.m. on Fox. At 4.30 p.m., the Washington Commanders will play the Dallas Cowboys in a rivalry game. The Cowboys will be making their 56th Thanksgiving Day appearance. This game will be showing on CBS and also streaming simultaneously on Paramount+. Plus. Finally, the San Francisco 49ers will be facing off against the Seattle Seahawks at the nightcap at 8.20 p.m. on NBC. This game will also be streaming simultaneously on Peacock. NFL Thanksgiving Day also supplies the answer to this episode's trivia question. As a reminder, this episode's question was, which NFL player scored the most points in a Thanksgiving Day game? The answer is Ernie Nevers. On Thanksgiving Day in 1929, Ernie Nevers, 
who is an inaugural inductee to both the College and Pro Football Halls of Fame, scored a remarkable 40 points playing for the Chicago Cardinals. He scored six rushing touchdowns and kicked four extra points which was the entire scoring output for the Cardinals that day. This remains an NFL record for overall points scored and is the longest standing record as well. His six rushing touchdowns is also a record. He was the sole holder of this until 2020 when the New Orleans Saints Alvin Kamara also ran for six touchdowns in a Christmas Day game. Holidays just seem like a good opportunity to break records in the NFL. We will be discussing a fun activity for couples in Pittsfield. Pop-up park picnic couple date night. Enjoy a fun, enjoy a fun pop-up picnic sunset date for couples. These date nights are self-guided so you can go at any time on any day. Each date night consists of a series of activities that you are guided to complete. All you need is your own in mobile device and an internet connection to access your digital date night box. This will be going on North Street and is great for both couples young or in old. This event will be starting on November 25th at 10 a.m. Visit the website shown here for more information. Our next story takes us to Stockbridge, to the Norman Rockwell Museum for a new exhibit. Between Worlds, the art and design of Leo Lioni is the first major American retrospective dedicated to the art and design work of groundbreaking modernist designer and children's book author, Leo Leone. Together with chief curator, Stephanie Habus Plunkett, the exhibition is co-curated by author and children's book historian, Leonard Marcus, and illustration and design historian, Stephen Heller. The museum is also working closely with Annie Leone, the artist's granddaughter. As the old distinction between fine art and applied art came up for lively reconsideration after the Second World War, Leo Leone emerged as one of the international designs community's indispensable pathfinders and bridge builders. Idealistic and globally minded, Leone viewed pithy, smart, deceptively simple graphic design as a worthy contribution to the post-war effort to reassert democratic values and establish a visual lingua franca to unite people across generations and cultural borders. A kind of 20th century Leonardo da Vinci he pursued his creative visions across several related domains, each of which will be explored in depth in this exhibition, including graphic design and advertising art, his art direction at Fortune and print magazines, the creation of 40 children's picture books, and personal works including printmaking, photography, drawing, painting, and sculpture. The exhibit will be going on from now until May of next year. Visit the website shown here for more information. Mass Mocha in North Adams has several art activations throughout the year. Their next series of art activations will highlight like magic. Humans have long sought 
healing, growth, rejuvenation, regeneration, and blessing with natural materials. Whether at a healing spring in the Appalachian Mountains or the, from the dirt floor of a chapel in New Mexico. On the day of each new moon, believed by many to be a time of rebirth, visitors to Grace Clark's In a New Light Healing Dirt in Like Magic are invited to enter the chapel-like room and apply charcoal earth to parts of their body in needs of healing, harnessing the magic of belief in change. Join Mass Mocha in Clark's installation this fall on Monday, November 13th and Wednesday, December 13th during gallery hours. Visit Mass Mocha's website shown here for more information. With fall here and winter approaching, one of the most popular activities to do is go on outdoor walks. One of the more popular ones is Nightwood at the Edith Wharton Mount in Lenox. Nightwood is an outdoor sound and light experience that is set against the backdrop of the Edith Wharton Mount. According to its website, it is, quote, an ethereal winter landscape that immerses visitors in sound, light, and color. Inspired by the Mount's unique architecture, landscape, and history, Nightwood utilizes original music, lighting, and sculptural elements to create different experiences of space and place throughout the property." End quote. The total route is approximately three quarters of a mile through the woods and gardens and includes both paved and unpaved pathways, inclines, and stairs. This year promises to be an even bigger and better year. This event will be going on November 17th through January 6th, 2024. Visit edithwharton.org to purchase tickets. Our next stop takes us to Great Barrington for a concert at the Mahewi Theater with close encounters with music. This particular concert will focus on nocturne, nights, and dreams. Nuances of the night are explored in this multifaceted program. Release from the brightness of daylight from consciousness into sleep and dreaminess the night's seductive, mysterious, Poston-like allure has fascinated artists throughout the ages. Lullabies celebrate repose, the restful charm, and serenades celebrate love. Other works mark the fear of darkness, the unseen and what may lurk beneath the veil of night. Composers from Mozart and Schubert to Borden and Bernstein have been transfixed, lulled, soothed, and aroused. Close Encounters with Music will be playing some of these songs. Beethoven evokes the enchantment of the moon in his iconic Moonlight Sonata. Mozart's Elie Klein Knotts Music is a perennial favorite and will be performed in its original scoring. Leader by Schumann, Debussy, Faure, and areas from Gonad's Romeo and Juliet, plus selections from favorite musicals such as West Side Story and Man of La Mancha, demonstrate the universality of this theme. Performing will be Fabio Bidini on piano, John Viscardi as a baritone singer,
Kobe Malkin and Grace Park on violin, Luke Fleming on viola, Lizzie Burns on double bass, and Yehuda Hanadi on cello. This concert is scheduled to go on Sunday, December 3rd at 4 p.m. Visit Mahewi.org to purchase tickets. On the last episode of WWATN, I mentioned the small town of Peru, Massachusetts, which is one of the smallest towns in Berkshire County. During that piece, I mentioned how Peru was originally incorporated with another Berkshire County town, Hinsdale. For this episode, I'll be talking about the town of Hinsdale. Originally part of Northern Berkshire Township Number 2, and including all parts of Peru, as mentioned last episode, and parts of Middlefield and Dalton, the town was first settled in 1763 and officially incorporated as Partridge Field in 1771. Named for Oliver Partridge, one of the three purchasers of the town, along with then Governor Francis Bernard. The Western Paris officially broke away from its eastern half and incorporated in 1804, renaming itself for the family of Reverend Theodore Hinsdale, who also owned an important wool mill in Hinsdale. The mill was the center of economic activity in town until the Great Depression, when it closed. Hinsdale, along with Dalton, is home to two historic long-distance routes. The Appalachian Trail, which is also a National Scenic Trail, and the Boston and Albany Railroad on which operates the Lakeshore Limited Passenger Rail that has run continuously from Boston to Chicago since 1897. The Hinsdale Train Depot, located in the town center, was closed in 1954. The actual intersection of the two corridors lies at the also decommissioned train depot just north in Dalton. Hinsdale is also the home of several summer camps, including Ola Mundo Beach Camp, Camp Taconic, Camp Emerson, and Camp Danaby for girls. As stated at the beginning of this episode, the holiday season is upon us. It's a great time for watching holiday movies that range from the classic It's a Wonderful Life to the recent and actionized Violent Night. Ironically, I'm sort of a Scrooge when it comes to holiday movies myself. Most of the time, I think they're too sappy corny, or overly romantic. And no, movies like Die Hard do not count as holiday movies. Just because a movie takes place during Christmas does not automatically mean it's a Christmas movie. But I do have a soft spot for some holiday movies. My personal favorite holiday movie is the 2004 film, The Polar Express, based off the novel by Chris Van Allsburg. In this movie, a young boy, straining to hear the bells of Santa's sleigh on Christmas Eve, instead hears a train whistle. He goes outside to find a magical train, the Polar Express of the title which was sent to pick up the boy and hundreds of other children 
to go to the North Pole in Santa's workshop. There, one of the passengers will receive the first gift of Christmas. This film was the first animated film to use motion capture entirely. What this means is that the actors are not, characters are not drawn animated, but rather based off the actor's movements, like a video game. Tom Hanks, in particular, was able to play multiple roles using the motion capture. Besides these facts, there are many more reasons why I love this movie. It's beautifully animated, and it understands the holidays well. It's got some moments that will make you smile, as well as some sad moments, but it is truly a holiday classic. AMC and TNT love this movie. They always play it during December and it is usually on demand as well. Stay tuned next episode for some breaking news about the actor strike. As stated earlier, the holidays are an important time to give back. The Nonprofit Center for the Berkshires, or NPC Berkshires, are a great source of the nonprofits. First, it's important to know what a nonprofit is. According to the Cornell Law School's website, a nonprofit organization is, quote, a group organized for purposes other than generating profit and in which no part of the organization's income is distributed to its members, directors, or officers in a bonus pay situation, end quote. It would pay basic salaries, and they can have events such as fundraisers and parties, but no money goes directly to the business. Instead, it goes to various charities and support groups. In Berkshire County, there are tons of nonprofit businesses. NPC Berkshire's website lists over 140 of these businesses. Some of them I've mentioned in past episodes of WWHEN. These include One Berkshire, Barrington Stage Company, The Baseball in the Berkshires Exhibit, Berkshire Antheneum, as well as most of the other Berkshire County Libraries, Berkshire Dance Theater, Berkshire Grown, Berkshire Museum, Downtown Pittsfield Incorporated, Jacob's Pillow Dance Company, Mahawee Performing Arts Center, the Sandisfield Art Center, Vent Fort Hall Manson and Gilded Age Museum, WAM Theater in Lenox, and television channels like CTSB TV and PC TV. These are just a few of them, however. Each year, the Nonprofit Center of the Berkshires publishes a giving back guide listing over 1,000 nonprofits in their directory of Berkshire County. In addition, you can go to their website at npcberkshires.org, go down to the volunteer drop-down page and click on givebackberkshires.org. There are 150 places to help, 120 ways to help, and an additional window of items needed and places they are needed at. So during this holiday season, 
don't forget to give back if it is possible. That ends this episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. If you would like to watch this or any other WWATN episode again, you can visit Pittsfield TV's and CTSB TV's websites shown here or visit NBCTC's Facebook page. Also, if you would like to see the episodes in HD quality, make sure to check out my YouTube page at RT Weary. Thank you and enjoy your Thanksgiving. <laughs>